My name is John Davis, and I'd like to welcome you to my mini studio. It's sort of like cribs, but with one very small room. I was attempting to write a biography just a mini bio on what it is that I do for a performance I have coming up and I said something ridiculous like European house meets modern hip-hop but imagine all those aesthetics but kind of manifesting in Lexington, Kentucky <laughs> so uh, of course I have a unique story maybe not exceptional but I have I have a certain story as, as does anyone else and um, my musical sense is unique uh, so I feel like if I, if I work hard to make the best product that I can, I can make something that's true to myself or something that resonates with other people. Either way, uh, I'm happy to make music and just sort of test the limits of what I can do and hopefully learn something in the process. BGE, the Black Gospel Ensemble, visited my high school, visited Tate's Creek, and I was like the only guy standing up and being like, yeah. <laughs> and my friend was like, sit down. <laughs> so I went there, I visited there, and I saw the lovely campus, the small campus with many trees. It was probably a very nice day out when I visited. <laughs> and I, I met Professor Ginn, Professor Glenn Ginn, who is an outstanding professor of jazz music. And we talked about one, four, five progressions, and uh, he was like, "If I write out this progression, I think it was uh, B flat, E flat, and F dominant chords. Would you know how to do it?" I was like, "No." <laughs> so it got it got sort of the gears rolling as to what sort of things I should work on beforehand. But I was very decided to go. I didn't shop around too much. It's sort of a personal mission I'm fulfilling, I suppose, just to be the best artist that I can be, but along the way I would like to work with people, make friends, and maybe be a catalyst for their ventures as well, um, as lately I've, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of cool people. I've had the chance to record at least one friend in this room, uh, Jordan Hunter, and it was a very fun session. There's a lot of ukulele going on and a bit of singing and uh, MIDI notes. Yeah, the landscape or, or what it means to be a producer is changed. I believe that, well, I'm pretty sure that in the past, you needed a lot more help to do what you can do these days, say with a computer. Um, and I think it's easy to promote things. It's not, not everybody's an expert in promotion, but you can go to Facebook and make a page and tell your friends and their friends can tell their friends. Um, and also, like technically, as a producer, you're capable of a lot more. Uh, it might depend on what genre you're looking to work in. For me, all I really need is a, a computer, like a personal computer or a laptop. And I can make a few uh, silly MIDI beats. I can find a kick drum sample and uh, work with a few synthesizers and make something that I feel is convincing. And that's fun. So if you sign up today. <laughs> So like, what, what are some of your influences, like people that you gain inspiration from? Oh wow, um, I'm gonna say Markiplier actually, <laughs> the Let's Player guy from YouTube. Uh, just the fact that he could do something that a lot of people think is sort of ridiculous, but make it his own and make it fun. Um, musically, I'm gonna say Daft Punk and Dead Mouse and 
the Skrillex guy with the fancy haircut and uh, Gesaffelstein and so, some more uh, awkwardly unknown house producers. But I, I appreciate the crossroads of technical things and creative things. It's really fun and just learning about sound is cool. So I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs> you have plans to go to Mars with your music. <laughs> you know, I like to think, I think that, I don't know how fast those kind of waves travel, but maybe a little bit of my, uh, my music has already been there. <laughs>